Hello and welcome back to my kitchen. Bentornati nella mia cucina. Today we're going to cook something a little bit elaborate, but it's really, really close to my heart. It's something that I really love. It's ragù alla bolognese. So ragù is a typical Italian sauce originally from Bologna, although it's been basically reinterpreted many times and this is my own personal interpretation of it. So if you're from Bologna, don't get offended, don't take it personally. A lot of different people in Italy make ragù in very different ways depending on what ingredients they can get and their personal taste. As I mentioned, this recipe is a little bit more complicated than what I cooked so far. It can take 20 minutes to prepare and up to 4 hours to cook depending on how dense you want your ragu to be. So let's get started and see the list of ingredients we need. But before we do that, I need a little bit of a transformation. Okay, I'm ready. These are the typical ingredients for a pot of ragu. First of all, we need meat. And we normally use uh, lean minced beef, about 500 grams. The traditional recipe also has some minced pork, but that's completely up to you if you want to add it or not. Then we need 150 gram of pancetta, some carrots, some onions or shallots, some celery, passata di pomodoro of course, tomato passata, some red wine, some water, some salt, some pepper, my favorite basil, and of course some extra virgin olive oil. In terms of tools, that's pretty easy. We need a big pot, a knife, and a chopping board. Now we're ready to start. We need to start preparing a soffritto, which you should know by now, it's the base to a lot of Italian dishes and all sughi. We need to chop the carrots, the celery and the onions or shallots in very, very thin pieces. Once you're done chopping your vegetables, you can add them to the preheated olive oil together with the pancetta and leave it for about 10 minutes. Once the pancetta is crispy and the vegetables are golden, we can finally add the meat. So now let's make sure we use a spoon or another tool to make sure that we separate the meat properly. Once the meat starts to become a little bit brown, it's time to add a little bit of red wine and leave it there until all of the alcohol has evaporated. Once the meat has properly absorbed the wine and it's getting a bit brown, then it's time to add the passata and some little water. Now it's also time to add some herbs, for example basil. In the original recipe there's actually no basil by the way, but I love it so much I just want to add it. Something else I personally really love is adding a couple of cloves to the ragu uh, to give it a little bit of a kick. This is not part of the traditional recipe, but my grandma used to make it that way and because she passed away now every time I taste ragu with cloves it kind of reminds me of her, so I just love it that way. And that's pretty much it really, there's not much else you need to do except for keep on adding a little bit of water during the cooking phase if uh, the ragu is absorbing a lot of it. Uh, we need to keep it moist to make sure that um, all of the water and tomato is absorbed very slowly um, and keep on stirring really, like it's gonna take hours for this ragu to be perfectly cooked. So make sure you keep your hob at a very low temperature and keep on the ragu going for about three to four hours is a long time but I swear it's gonna be worth it. After about three hours your ragu should be ready. Make sure the consistency is proper, that it's not too watery but it's also not too solid. You can always add a little bit of water to adjust that. Uh, make sure you don't add too much otherwise you're gonna get a very watery ragu which is not what we want. Make sure you also add a little bit of salt and pepper to your liking and to adjust the final flavor. And once it's ready, it should look like this. Once again, a very long cooking time, but mamma mia, it's gonna be delicious, I swear. So that's it, there you go, you got your ragu. And now you can keep it in the fridge for about two to three days, or you can even froze it and use it later on. There are loads of things you can do with the ragu. The most straightforward one is to add the ragu to tagliatelle and do tagliatelle al ragu which are amazing. But also you can do lasagna alla bolognese and this is actually one of my favorite dishes so I'm gonna cover it in one of my next videos so make sure you keep on watching Marco Bites and make sure you subscribe so you'll be notified when that video is ready. You can check out my other recipe over there in the card. Make sure you like this video and share with your friends so that you can also enjoy a taste of Italy in a bite. And I'll see you very soon here in my kitchen for another one of Marco Bites. Because if I can cook Italian, you can cook it too. Alla prossima!
See you next time.